Saquon Barkley has agreed to a one-year deal. Yeah! crowd goes wild. What does this mean? It means he reports to camp. That's so exciting. And he's still not able to sign a longer extension because it's past the deadline, of course, but he was able to sweeten the pot a little bit for himself. And that matters, people, because it could have not happened at all. The windows closed, the deal's over, hold out, schmold out. He would end up losing money if he held out from camp. But Shefty says the deal is fully guaranteed for the same amount as the tag, but he has the chance to earn up to a million dollars in incentives based on rushing yards, touchdowns, receptions. There are some people at the Art Stapletons of the world saying that some of those incentives are tied to Giants playoff appearances and sort of all of that. But we have Dan Dugan joining us in a bit to give us um, all of the details as he is with the Giants, covering them for the athletic and knows uh, the nitty gritty better than I do. But this is exactly what I said yesterday. Is it the most lucrative deal ever? No. Is the bet, you know, Saquon jumping on his bed? No. But he rented uh, a house he didn't love and the, the you know, landlords are throwing in a heated pool and a month's free rent and maybe they're taking care of the electricity for a little. It just made it a little better. He's going to be a less disgruntled tenant. And he's putting himself, as I said, just put yourself in the best position to maximize your value and make the most money. Get the most money you can and control what you can control. So he's going to get his earnings. He's going to get in the building, which is amazing. And for that to happen in this woof running back market, he got what he could, okay? The giant side, I mean, they just make it happen. They didn't have to give up much more. They now have uh, a leader, a stud, and an incentivized player back at work. And these distractions, the media vultures like Dan Dugan swarming will sort of settle down and hopefully go away for now. It is a huge win for Shane and Dable. And they can still franchise tag him next year, which is a big note and something to consider here. They locked up Jones earlier. Joe Shane, you dog you. I mean, you are putting together a masterclass in less than two years on the job, bringing in these guys. I don't know who your receivers are. So we'll have to uh, talk about that in a bit. And for more on Saquon and the Giants, who are contenders in the NFC, let's bring in Dan Dugan. I don't know if that's a question mark or an exclamation point with this contender talk, but you work for The Athletic and you cover these Giants. Uh, Dan, this is a big day. Yeah, and no offense taken to the Vultures comment, of course. Um, <laughs> but no, it, it, I mean, you're saying you're on the West Coast. At least I was awake when it happened. I can't imagine, you know, yeah. how many tweets must have been on your timeline by the time you, uh, you saw this news because, I didn't see it coming. It felt like once that deadline passed last week, we were going to be in for a long stare down. And, you know, there was already talks, but he sit out games. So sit out games, he wanted to sit out of practice. I mean, he reported today, he'll be on the field tomorrow. So, um, again, it's been, a, it's been a long process. It started last November. And, you know, obviously the Giants had the leverage, they used the leverage. And even right down to the finish line here, Saquon Barkley, I just think he just didn't have the stomach to actually follow through with any of the threats he could have made about sitting out. He wanted to be there with his team. You got a little bit of a sweetener here. Not much. The Giants still didn't give much, uh, but they get a happy, yeah. motivated Saquon Barkley, and, and everyone's happy in the locker room. And, and, you know, it couldn't have worked out better for them based on <laughs> how far they've gone down this path. I wonder if he's happy. I don't know if he's happy, but it's a, a thing where he sort of, and his, and his representation, of course, they know that the leverage is on the other side, but because of the market is what it is. It's no one's fault. It's not Saquon's fault, running back's fault, or the GM's trying to do their job and be responsible as it doesn't seem trendy uh, to give out these lucrative deals to these running backs at this point in time. They can still tag him next year. It's all roses for the Giants brass. They're certainly happy. Is there anything about this deal or these incentives that I need to know? Yeah, yeah, I will say, yeah, happy is probably not the right word, but he's content enough to show up. But no, that's what I mean. Like, they didn't give up much. I thought the, the thing that might have got this over the edge would be like, we'll put a provision in that they can't tag you next year. That way, he's motivated because he knows he has a great year. He's going to hit the market and finally get what he thinks he deserves. Yeah. The fact that they didn't have to do that, and even if you look at the actual incentives, he didn't achieve these last year, and he had a great year last year. 1,350 rushing yards, 11 touchdowns. Um, mm. 60 catches, I think, and they have to make the playoffs. So he can have a great year if the team doesn't make the playoffs. So for the Giants, it's it's all about you know gravy at that point for them. If he hits all these incentives and they make the playoffs, they'll happily fork over nine hundred thousand more dollars in exchange for having him report to camp and not have drama and not have this hanging over everything. So to me, it's such a win for them. I guess you can say, okay, he got nine hundred more grand, but if he if he plays well enough to achieve those, we're in the same spot next year because then they can tag him again. So uh, the Giants certainly. Yeah. Um, won these negotiations right down to, to the last thing here today.